What is up everybody? It is Brian with First Shot Tactical back with another video for you here today. And today we're doing a quick unboxing and overview of these triggers that I have here. These are both from a company called Ballistic Engineering. We have two different versions. We have the core model here and then also we have the accurized or accurized version. I have a hard time saying that. But anyway, we'll also be installing one of these here on a lower so that way you can see how easy it is to put these drop-in triggers in. So with that, let's go ahead and get into it. First thing, let's go ahead and get these out of the package. Again, these are from a company called Ballistic Engineering. Engineering, a newer company in the trigger market. And I know everyone has their triggers that they like, but more competition in the trigger market is great news from a consumer standpoint, because that means we're gonna get higher quality products at a great price point as well. So competition in the marketplace is always great for us users. So this is the core trigger here uh, when it's out of the package here. So you can see it's a drop-in trigger here. You also have this set screw here that you can adjust to make sure you get the right fitment into your lower here. And then the other thing to note here is comparing this to a traditional drop-in trigger here, I have over here, this is a Rise Armament uh, Rave 140 trigger here. So putting these side by side, I just opened up the trigger face so we can see inside here. But the big difference is you see this big old thing here that does not exist here. So basically the location of the disconnector is different on the ballistic engineering one versus a traditional trigger or this rave one that we have. And you can also see on the hammer up here is that the disconnector is on the hammer on a traditional one versus this one, it is not. So the difference here is on a traditional trigger here, when you go ahead and reset the trigger, the hammer will come back down here. And when we actually have that trigger uh, compressed here, you can see right here is where it latches on and then you let go of the trigger, it releases there, and then our disconnector down below catches it. However, on the ballistic advantage design here, when you go ahead and reset the trigger, you can see that there's no latch here. So the hammer will come back here. The latch is actually up here on the top part of the hammer here. So you can see, I actually just let it go. It will reset, release right there. And you can see this is now caught. And this allows the hammer to have a better motion back and forth and hopefully better reliability and performance on the trigger as well. Setting this aside here, uh, let's go ahead and get this last trigger out of the box. Um, same kind of packaging here. You can see, but this is the Accurized version or Accurized, Accurized, I don't know. I have the hardest time saying that here. But here you can see we can get the trigger out of the packaging here. And this is actually a adjustable trigger. They advertise that this can go between two and a half pounds to four and a half pounds. But I'm sure if we can get this in there, we can actually dial this back to about two pounds if we want. So next up, let's go ahead and get this installed here. I'm going to be installing the uh, adjustable one here, the Accurized version. So let's go ahead and get this into our lower. All right, so I got my lower here. I got my grip and trigger and safety out because that's the easiest way to always install these. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. So to install this, super easy to do. It's a drop-in trigger, so you simply drop it on in. Make sure our holes line up here. And the one thing here is I always use these anti-walk or anti-rotation pins here. Um, that does not come, these, do, these aren't included with the trigger here. So you definitely need to add these to your cart before picking up one of these triggers. So that way you can actually install it here. Or if you have these from your old trigger like I did, you can actually install them here as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop that in on one side, make sure that this lines up as we go ahead and put it in. There we go, that's through there. And then now I'm gonna grab my safety selector. My favorite one here is the Radian Talon. We're gonna pop that through here, make sure it's in. Add the ambidextrous side on the other side. Drop the pin there, there we go, that's on. Now we can grab our other anti-walk pin here. Go ahead and pop this in from one side. That one goes in pretty easy. And then before we get everything back together, I always like to give it a quick check, make sure it works. So we're on safe, nothing happens. I got the 45 throw here. We can go ahead and pull the trigger and the hammer does release then. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and get the rest of the parts on. Starting with my screws on the other side of my anti-walk pins. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw those in. Awesome, we have the screws in both sides. So that's all set. Next, let's go ahead and get our grip and detent, safety selector detent in on the bottom. Perfect, so with that, our trigger is installed now. Now the next thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and test the trigger pull on it, see what it's currently at, and then see if we need to make an adjustment on it, if we wanna have it lighter or heavier. To test this, I have my Wheeler trigger uh, pull scale here. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a couple pulls, see what the average is. Looks like about three. Looks like about three again. And again, right at three. All right, that's actually pretty light to begin with there. So as far as comparing the two triggers here, I can't wait to get this out to the range to actually test it out. But as far as which options best for you here, again, we have the core or the adjustable accurized version. Um, the core has the standard four pound weight 
that's already a phenomenal trigger. Most mil spec triggers are about six pounds or even a little heavier in an AR, and a four pound trigger compared to a six pound is a huge difference, and you're gonna love this right out of the gate. For you people that are a little bit more advanced like myself here and wanna try a lighter trigger pull, or if you're doing like a precision rifle build, maybe like a 308 AR-10 build, these are compatible with AR-10s and 308s. This is where you can get that lighter trigger pull, so that way you have a nice clean break, and this one also has the flat face trigger versus the core has the uh, curved face trigger here too. So those are the two options here. Both are great triggers right out of the gate here. Like I said, I'm excited to get them to the range, try them out, but overall just installing, super easy to do. Another thing to note here is these are compatible, like I said, with AR-15, AR-10, but also AR-9. And this is the core trigger specs here on the back. So again, set trigger pull weight of four, made out of hardened A2 and S7 steel, mil spec reliability with match grade performance. It has that patented disconnector like I talked about, and also it's 200% more efficient compared to the competition, like my rise armament trigger, when it comes to the zero creep pull and short reset. If this was helpful, like and subscribe to the channel. Always appreciate that. And until next time, have fun shooting, and we'll see you soon. Thanks everybody.